Hello, Doug Lovers. Uh, let me get started. Uh, here we go. Okay. Welcome to another dog training live session. Hope you're doing well. My name is Saro. I'm a dog trainer. I also coach dog owners. If this is your first time, welcome. And if you want to become an educated dog lover and have a healthy and happy well-behaved dog, consider subscribing to the channel and hit the bell icon as well so you will get notified as soon as I post my next video. In this video, I'm going to teach you the benefits of training your dog. I have a presentation that I'm going to start in a moment. And we're going to talk about how training your dog can benefit you and your dog and your life in general. And meanwhile, if you have any questions, please leave those questions in the chat area. I will answer them uh, right after the presentation. And we're going to actually talk about dogs. So there's too many things happening today. So hopefully you are doing well and everything is going well and you're feeling um, healthy and you're feeling happy and positive and there, is, there isn't any negativity in your life. If there is any, hopefully uh, this show is going to help you to escape that neg negativity for an hour and uh, hopefully after this session also you will have a better uh, emotional state of mind feel better as well so you can fight all those negative thoughts that are, and negative experiences that are happening in your life uh, so welcome hope you're uh, doing your dog is going well so let me start talking about what happens when we train our dogs what what are the benefits of training our dogs what do i mean when i say training your dog is going to uh, improve your dog's life and your life what do you what do i mean by saying that training is the key but let's talk about that and let's figure out what i mean by that so the benefits of training your dog so let's talk about what it is what can it do for you? What does it make a difference when we talk about training dogs? What do you get out of training your dogs? So, as you know, uh, I'm very uh, focused on not providing only just one thing for your dog. It's not only one type of thing that I want to one certain things that you have to provide to your dog that is going to solve all the problems and you're going to have the best dog in the world. There isn't, such, unfortunately, such a thing. Uh, you can have a magic ball and magic wand and get uh, the results that you want out of one thing. There are five things that you have to do and five things that you have to provide for your dog on a daily basis to get results. This is very important for you to understand. A, do a dog's five essential needs needs to be provided every day in order for you to get results. It's not only one thing, right? These are the things that you need to provide for your dog daily, every day, no matter what the day is, 365 days a year. Uh, every day you have to provide this for your dog. And you have to provide them in this order. And you are, you know, you've probably heard of, heard me saying this over and over. And today I'm also introducing to you, if you haven't heard this before, in order for your dog to be healthy and happy and well-behaved, you have to provide your dog's daily five essential needs, which is exercise, training, socialization, care, and then also affection. So you have to provide them in this order every day holiday, no holiday, long weekend, no long weekend, normal day. Somehow you have to provide these five daily essential needs for your dog in order for your dog to be healthy and happy. And today we are focusing mainly on exercise, the training. So I want to talk about a little bit more of training and what does it really do to you and to your dog and what are, what are you supposed to do in order to get the results that you want. So basically we're talking about training today. Mainly we're talking about training. 
when you train your dog, when I talk about training your dog, I mean, I want you to understand that you, I want you to do a 15 minutes or 30 minute block uh, and dedicate these 15 minutes to half an hour block to your dog and just be focused on your dog or your puppy. Try to have no distraction and be present present with your dog or your puppy at that moment. Be with it. Make sure that you are just there and just in enjoying the moments that you're spending with your dog. Now, 15 minutes to 30 minutes a day, it's like going to a, a Zen or yoga class, kind of, right? But in the, instead, in this case, you're doing uh, 30 minutes with your dog. 30 minutes maximum, 15 minutes for puppies, 30 minutes for adult dogs. So I want you to invest 30 minutes maximum a day to train your dog. So training your dog. So what I mean by training your dog. So there are so many you've heard of people saying and dog trainers, they always tell you and you might have heard from uh, everybody, even including me, that we keep saying, you know, you have to train your dog. What you have, what, how are you going to do improve your dog's life by training? So one of the benefits, one of the five essential needs of a dog is uh, training. So what is training? What do, what do we mean when we say training? So we're going to watch some videos now that I'm going to show you what I mean by training your dog. Okay, so what does training a dog look like? How does it look like when we say uh, train your dog? So let me get to the first video and we're going to watch the first video. And this is what training it will look like. So here's the game and how we're going to play this game. So I'm going to ask Josh to sit. So Josh over here, sit. Josh is going to sit and I'm going to tell him to stay. Josh. Stay, we're gonna go to the end, uh, end of the leash and I'm gonna call him. Just come. Good boy, good girl. Yes, good boy. And I'm just gonna praise him and this is our playtime. So remember, we've never played this game before so he doesn't know what's going on, why we are doing this or anything like this. But he'll figure it out eventually and we're gonna continue on the game. So here we go. So Josh is getting excited. I'm gonna tap him to sit on Josh, sit. Yes. Josh, stay. I'm gonna go. No. Nope. I'm gonna go to the end. Nope. Good boy. If he breaks the command, all I say is no, a verbal cue, and he corrects himself. I'm gonna go to the end of the leash. Uh, so we're there. I'm gonna ask jo uh, Josh to come. Josh, come. Good boy. Yes, I'm gonna praise him. All right. So we're gonna do this in a way that in the beginning, we're just gonna go in front of him and we're gonna ask him to come. And then we're going to start going around him. So this time I'm going to ask Josh to sit and stay. And I'm going to go on his side. And then I'm going to ask him to come. Josh, come. Come, boy. Yes. So at first we're going to try this on a leash. And then as, we get, as he gets better and I get better, and we practice this over and over for weeks and maybe even months on leash, then I'm going to off leash him. So Josh, sit. Oh, I know. Just stay. So this time I'm going to ask Josh to sit and stay, and I'm going to go behind him. And then I'm going to call him to come to me. Josh, come. Good boy. Yes. So I'm going to ask him again to sit. Josh, sit. Josh, stay. So this time uh, I'm back in front of him. So this time I'm right in front of him. So I started in front of him, I went to the uh, right side, and then I went on his back, and then on his left side, now I'm back in front of him, and I'm going to ask him to come. Josh, come. Good boy. Yes. Yeah. So from that pretend, we've done this for a uh, few weeks, and we practiced this for a few, few weeks, and we've done really good and he's really good and he's getting this game and he's understanding now we're going to do off leash so i'm going to practice with him off leash so josh come josh sit josh stay 
You're gonna go in front of him. Just come. Oh, good boy. Yes. Good boy. Now I'm gonna continue off leash and I'm gonna play with him. Yes. Good boy. Yes. So now it's a play time and also training time. So just sit. Good sit. Stay. I'm gonna go beside him. And this time I'm gonna wait for let's say 20 seconds. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just come. Good boy, yes, good boy, good boy, yes, right? Oh, he loves it, he loves it. I'm going to go behind him. I'm going to, this time I'm going to wait here for 30 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Just come. Good boy, yes. That was 30 seconds. Yes, good boy. Yes, yes, yeah, oh yeah. So, the, so you can see, yeah, right? That is training a dog. That's what I mean, training a dog. Okay, training a dog should be fun, should be playful, should be in an in an environment that the dog is nice and relaxed, is enjoying the activity that you're providing. Meanwhile, it's learning the sit, the stay, all the commands, interaction with you, learns how to communicate with you. This is what I mean with training, okay? Training a dog is not going to buy uh, the best treat in the world or making the best turkey sandwich for your dog, buying a pouch so you can put those food and treats in the pouch, uh, buying the best clicker, buying the best uh, shock color, buying the best tool to do uh, so you can set up yourself to train your dog. That's not it. Training a dog is this. This is how it looks like. This is training a dog. This is what I mean by training and spending time with your dog. So let's watch. Now, this is another ex uh, example of teaching recall command, for example, to my beagle. And let's watch this session also. How does it look like the session that I'm teaching my beagle how to come to me? Finally come. So here's how you're going to teach your beagle to come. You're going to put your beagle on the leash. You're going to ask your beagle to sit. How do you sit? I'm going to ask your beagle to stay, how we stay. So you have to make sure that your dog or your puppy knows sit and stay. So work on sit and stay. So we have worked on sit and stay. Now we're working on the calm or recall command. And I'm going to go through the process of training Harvey to come. You're going to ask your dog's name. You're going to ask it to come. And uh, you're going to ask your dog to come with a hand signal too. So this is the hand signal for come. So here's how it's going to look like. How you come? Good boy. So because I have my beagle on the leash, that me makes uh, my beagle to come to me 100% all the time. If my beagle decides not to come on the leash either, so how do we sit? How do we stay? If my beagle decides not to come on the leash, what I'll do, I'll tap and back off. Yes, go for yes, go for yeah. yes, and get excited. So get your beagle excited about coming to you. But make sure that your beagle is always on the leash. So, Harvey, come, go for yes, go for Get excited, make it exciting. Make sure that your beagle understands that every time you call your beagle's name, your beagle has to come to you. So make sure that it's always on the leash. Practice this for about a month or two, then you're gonna see that you, your beagle is gonna be better at coming to you when it's called, um, at least indoors. So after a month or two, you're going to start uh, using a longer leash to practice the same thing, okay? So you're going to put your beagle on a leash. Have it come. And then you're going to ask your beagle 
to sit and practice on a longer leash. So hurry, sit, hurry, stay. So you're gonna go to the end of the long leash and you're gonna ask your beagle to come. Hurry, come. Come on, yes, come on, yes, come on, yes. Make it fun, make it exciting, yes. And then the next level would be to practice the same things that you did indoors, outdoors. So that's uh, another video. So these are the first steps, getting started to train your bingo before you uh, practice them outdoors. So you get the point now, right? So that's what I mean when I say training. So training your dog has to be fun, has to have a, a technique that you have learned and then perform that technique with your dog uh, in a fun environment, in a fun uh, energy level, in a form that your, you and your dog are enjoying. So 15 minutes to 30 minutes of that kind of uh, spending time with your dog. So what happens when we train our dog? What, what happens when you do that with your dog for 10, 15 minutes, half an hour? So 15 minutes minimum, maximum half an hour. What happens when you train your dog for 15 minutes to half an hour a day? Preferably, you want to do this every day. If you can't, dedicate every day to your dog. Make sure you're doing every other day or at least three or four days a week, okay? So what happens when we train our dog, when, what, when you interact with your dog in that form? Your dog is able to solve issues and puzzles. Life for a dog, especially when living in human society with humans, is a puzzle. What I mean by puzzle is there's so many unknowns, there's so many things that a dog can see it as puzzle, doesn't know how to solve it. And that's why you will see dogs who are behaving certain way, behaving badly, behaving erratically, behaving aggressively. That's the reason why you're seeing dogs who are behaving in a way that you're saying is misbehaving. That's the reason is because they are not able to solve puzzles, solve issues. For example, if your dog sees a kid running, it's, it's a puzzle. What do I do in this case, right? So if you have trained your dog to sit, stay, and calm, and st uh, lie down and things like that, what happens? Your dog says, Oh, I've gone through similar exercises at home. I've solved kind of similar puzzles at home or in backyard or somewhere that I knew what I was doing. And now I'm faced with a different puzzle. But because I'm able to solve puzzles, this is going to be easier for me to solve it. So that is the reason why you're training your dog. The other reason is your dog gets more comfortable and is able to respond to pressure of life with humans. Again, you have to imagine your, you have to put yourself in your dog's shoe and place <laughs> and imagine everything else in the world, everything in the, in the, in the life of your dog, especially if your dog is living in human society with humans in a city and you know urban living, your dog is pressured a lot. Is there's so many things. For example, my own puppy Annie, she is every time I take her outside, there's something that it surprises her. Whoa, what was that? Whoa, what was that? And she has to learn all these things and understand what these things are. So because I'm training her, she's able to solve them and deal with them easily. Whereas untrained dog wouldn't be able to uh, do, uh, do those stuff and learn how to uh, manage and control those. The other reason is they get mental and physical stimulation 
which results in a calmer and relaxed dog. So when you, for example, train your dog using that training session that we just watched, me training at Beagle Harvey uh, and training a, a, a mixed dog, Josh, you, you saw we, we were spending 15 minutes to half an hour training, working on the training, right? That 15 minutes, half an hour for a dog, if it's done training, it's equal to going to school or work for eight hours. If you do it 15 minutes to half an hour of training with your dog, it's equal to having your dog to work for eight hours. That's how effective training is. So these are the benefits of and also what happens when you train your dog. So here are the steps that you need to take when it comes to training your dog. The steps are, you know, you start with puppy training, which is you invest three months into training your puppy. Yes, it takes three months for a puppy to learn the basics of not only training, basics of life with human. It takes three months. You know, people rush, they go too fast with puppies. They do everything too fast to the point that the puppy gets overwhelmed with everything that is happening around it and doesn't learn properly. And if it learns, it learns in an environment and condition that it's stressful and overwhelming. So for puppy training, you're going to invest three months to do puppy training. And then you're going to start obedience training or formal training, right? This stage takes will take you six to nine months. So the first year of your dog, you have to invest in training it, right? The... The first stage is the puppy training, and the second stage is uh, the obedience training. Obedience training has in, in, uh, basic obedience, then has intermediate level, and then it has advanced level. So you have to go through these levels with your dog in order to learn uh, different levels of pressure how to deal with these levels of different pressure that you're putting on your dog. You're, you're offering different puzzle levels to your dog. So puppy level, you're, you're teaching your puppy just to sit and stay and calm, for instance. In obedience, basic obedience, you're teaching it to sit, stay calm, heal, um, uh, down, uh, and all uh, st stand and all that, right? Those basic obedience. Uh, but you're just teaching it. Now, in intermediate level, you're teaching your dog to do all those with distractions around. We call it the three Ds, uh, distance, durations, and uh, distractions, right? We fo focus on uh, adding more distractions. And in advanced level, the, the those three Ds, distractions, uh, distance and durations are longer, right? So which is more challenging for your dog. Once you've done this, you have trained your dog for a year, then you're going to start training your dog other forms of training, agility, for, fly ball, scent dog, you know, you scenting, uh, scent uh, tracking, all these things are other exercises and trainings that you're going to do with your dog. So this gives you an idea of what you need to do and how much you have to spend time with your dog or puppy to get a good, great dog. So remember, it takes time. You need to invest at least a year training your dog in order to get results. From the moment that you get your puppy to the day that you can say that my puppy or my dog is fully trained, it should take you a year. Less than that, you're going too fast. Uh, longer than that, you're going too slow. A year is a good time to invest in training your dog. And if you want to start training your dog, obviously, you know, you can join my online courses, um, you know, on um, 
I have courses online. You can join at sorrowdogtraining.com. Start learning today. Start getting uh, train, to train your dog and getting the results that you want. So <clears throat> this was my presentation. So I wanted you to I wanted you to see exactly how it looks like when we talk about training. What are the benefits? What are why are we training our dog? And what do we get out of training our dog? Hopefully that made sense. I am ready to answer your questions related to the topic that I started today or any other question that you have about your dog. Let's get started and let's talk about dog. And meanwhile, if you have any, uh, if you have any questions, leave those questions in the chat area. Uh, and if you're new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel right there. You're going to click on subscribe button and then you're going to click on the bell icon as well and you're going to choose all all notifications so you will be notified as soon as i post my next video or, or if i go live so are you ready let's start with teresa mccarter uh, welcome teresa thank you for being here uh, teresa says thank you so much i'm looking forward to this one too great thank you i hope you enjoyed it so far uh, we'll talk about more about training and benefits of it. Sab is saying my five months uh, old mini poodle is doing so well because of providing him with his five his essential daily needs since I brought him home at eight weeks. I've been putting in the work and it's paying off. Thank you. You are very welcome. And there you go. That is a good, uh, I mean, the best feedback that a dog trainer can get from, you know, a, a dog dog lover like you. That is great. You know, by providing your dogs daily five essential needs, you are going to be able, uh, you know, many, again, many people, they don't uh, realize this. Um, they don't, on, they don't um, focus on providing these five essential needs, which is exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. That's what we are talking about. Uh, Sab is mentioning that he is, is being providing uh, the its mini poodles daily five essential needs, which is exercise, training, socialization, care, and then affection. And it's seeing that it's paying off. So you can't just focus on providing exercise for your dog or just training or just socialization or maybe a little bit of care and affection. You have to provide all these five things in order to get results. And that is great. I'm so happy for you, Sab. And thank you for being here. And thank you for uh, providing this feedback. Regina, I'm getting an eight-week old lab puppy June 24th okay so in about a month uh, I'd like to know what to expect expect but I'm prepared to do the work I'm excited so Regi Regina I I started the the, sh the live show today with my presentation so go back and watch that if you missed it but if you have seen it that's one of the things I want you to uh, to put the work okay focus on providing those daily five essential needs. This is, I think, it's a good reminder for everybody to know and see and um, and uh, remember that you're, you need to provide your daily, um, you, you, you need to provide your dog's daily five essential needs, which are exercise, training, socialization, care and affection. If you provide these, you will have great results. But what happens when you get a puppy, especially eight weeks old, a, a side note, a side note. Okay, let me give you a side note, Regina. I wish you will get your lab puppy a little bit later, maybe at 10 weeks or 12 weeks if possible. I, if it's possible to talk to the breeder or whoever you're getting your lab from, if you, they could delay two to four more weeks, that would be great. Eight weeks old puppy is too early to come home to humans. 
you want to allow your puppy to spend a little bit more time with his parents and sibling if possible because that is crucial one of the reasons i say that is because when when a puppy is separated from from its parents too early too soon and it comes to a human environment human society humans they don't do the right things they don't take the right steps and they kind of mess up that sensitive part of a puppy which a, a human whether we are professionals or not we can't provide what the parents and siblings do it's very crucial there are so many things happening during that time with the puppy uh, among the parents and siblings that it will reflect on what your lab is going to be become it's that important i just wanted to put on that part okay i see many i you know i i did that mis- i made that mistake too i years ago when i was getting a puppy i got a puppy too early at 8 weeks I thought that was that was then that was then that, I made a mistake I didn't know better now I know better new studies have shown and we learned that 8 weeks is too early to let the puppy to go we want to make sure that the puppy is let go at least 10 to 12 weeks old and that would be much more beneficial for the future of the puppy future life of the puppy plus it will make uh, a lot of y- your work uh, it, it will make your work even less so it's an investment that you're making in your life and your puppy's life so that would be a side note that i just wanted to mention that it it is better to not rush and let the puppy come a little bit later now what to expect uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to share with you a video that i'm going to explain a little bit more in this video but basically what happens when you bring a new dog no matter what breed it is now in my case i brought a beagle puppy home okay and it was rescue and and it was um and it was i think it was 4 months old already but it doesn't ma- matter what what it is this video will give you some ideas of what you need to do so new puppy home ideas so i'm going to call this video new puppy home ideas um in the chat area please watch that video and you'll get better ideas what you need to do what to expect what you need to expect is that you're going to have a few weeks of sleepless nights <laughs> that's basically what you're going to get uh you can you won't be you will be a mom you know a dog dog mom um mom do, dog mom uh there's dog dad dog mom you're going to be a dog mom for a few weeks but if you do properly if you do everything right which i explain in that video uh, i think you'll have a easier time by the way congratulations on getting and make sure that you delay the pickup time a little, few more weeks is it possible let me know if in the chat area is it possible to delay or not Uh, we have Elizabeth Caruso. Thank you for being here. Hi, sir. I almost forgot to tune in. I'm walking my mini poodle, Timmy, trying to think of question. <laughs> I love your show. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time to even walk and watch the show at the same time while you're walking your mini poodle. That is the important task to do. You know, walking your dog is very important. Uh, speaking of walking your dog, this week's weekends. 
video is about how to improve your dogs, your slash beagle leash walk. So if you are interested in improving your dog or your puppy's leash walk, make sure to watch this the video coming up on Sunday. By the way, Elizabeth, thank you for being here and appreciate taking the time to come here. Uh, Monica is saying, I have a six month old puppy, Beagle, help. <laughs> uh, oh, you, you know, that, that you are at the right place. You are, you know, I can help you as much as you want. Uh, you are saved, my friend, no worries. Uh, so what are you gonna do? You're gonna watch Beagle Puppy Training Videos. So I'm gonna put a link. It's a playlist of a whole bunch of videos of how to train your Beagle Puppy and how to do everything with your puppy. Uh, I'm gonna put it in a chat area. Please watch that, no worries. You're in the right place. I will help you. Let me know what specific question you have, Monica, and I will help you with that. Uh, Sab is saying, because of social distancing, my mini poodle is very attached to me. I do try to give him some alone time during the day, but I feel awful that he's stressed when I leave. He follows me everywhere. This is... Uh, you know, this is something I would say it happens. <laughs> it happens, especially um, to new dog owners. And um, during this time that, you know, we've spent time, you know, th this is one of the side effects of working from home and social distancing and having a puppy or a dog you know many uh, i i'm i was worried about this and i knew this is going to come up and this is going to happen you know people were social told to be social distancing and they were quarantining themselves at home or staying at home and meanwhile they were going and getting a puppy or a dog and now reality, reality kicks in and everybody's going kind of back to normal, We're going back to work. And these dogs are used to us to be there 24 seven. And now we are not. Unfortunately, this is going to happen a, a lot often and a lot more. And the way you can deal with this is several few things that you can do. One of them is that if you see that your puppy or your dog is attached to you and if they follow you and you are kind of overwhelmed with that, that's a sign that your puppy needs training. That means it's lacking confidence. You have to bring that confidence level up. Now you're saying, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by confidence? When a dog is behaving that way, that means it needs your support and help to, to help it to solve the next puzzle, which is how to be independent, right? So until now, they, will, they were dependent on you in a way, and you need to teach them now to be independent. The way you do independent, the way you teach a dog to be independent, literally is by, you know, spending time to train your dog. What I mean by train your dog, again, you know, I showed earlier, you know, this is what I mean. You, you need to just take the time and just physically train your dog to sit, stay and calm and introduce different levels of puzzles to your dog. So for example, in this case, you're seeing me working with this dog. I'm asking it to sit and stay and 10 seconds, like for example, 10 seconds. And then next I'm offering a different level of puzzle, which is 20 seconds. And then after that, I, you know, after a day or two or a week, I start, instead of sitting in front of it, I go and sit in, in the back, you know, or on the side, or, or, you know, I do different variety of tasks 
and um, different ways of challenging my dog. So this helps your dog to start learning how to solve puzzles, solve uh, issues, right? And therefore, one of the issues is how do I detach myself from my human, which in general, you want to teach your dog sit, stay, and wait. There's a difference between, for example, wait and stay. Many people, they teach, they think it's the same thing or they use it at the same time, not understanding that there's a difference between wait and stay. Wait, stay is different. People use it, for example, the wrong way. Stay is, your, for example, you're visible to your dog, you're in front of your dog, you're visible to your dog, and it's about five minutes, maximum 10 minutes. Whereas wait, you're not visible to your dog, you're not present to your dog, and it starts from 10 minutes and it goes up to four hours. So you're staying, you're teaching your dog to learn the difference between stay and wait. And wait means you, you, and also wait, you use it when, for example, you want your dog to be independent, when you want your dog to be learning how to deal with your uh, absence, you're, you're not there, when you're not there. So it's important to teach these things, right? Work on your dog. Instead of thinking and saying that, um, my dog is thinking like this and is negative and it's, uh, it's so um, attached to me and think negative thoughts. Think of positive positivity and say, mm, my dog needs my help. I need to do this. This is now the time for me to start working on this and that. And we're going to have fun and teach him uh, or her a new lesson, right? You're going to start working on this. So be positive and take it as a message to you that you need to increase the, the, the puzzle level, you know, the difficulty level of the puzzle and teach and train your dog a little bit more maybe. Hope that helps. Great question. Uh, Dil Z, Dil Z, I think that's how you say it, but cool name. I know this isn't to do with training, but what's your opinion on how German Rottweilers are being bred? German Rottweilers. In general, I would say Europeans are better breeder, breeders, especially Germans. They do better, they're better breeders. They do better breeding than other countries. Now, I've seen German Rottweilers. Um, I would say, you know, in general, the way we have bred dogs has changed. And it's not the same anymore. Unfortunately, we are not breeding dogs properly anymore. It has nothing to do with now, the German breeders or Italian breeders or American breeders, it has to do be, with certain breeder. You have to find the breeder that breeds the dog the, the way it was meant to. And the, the, the way it was meant to, you have to go back to 1920s and find the files from 1920s and those are the ones that used to be the original uh, breed um, standards. The standards today have changed, and it, it's not a matter of what country is breeding. It's a matter of which individual breeds that breed to the standard point level. So that would be my, my answer, actually. Good, clean, good, cool answer, uh, question. Monica is saying, um, am I right? Yes, Monica, she's so stubborn. I've been watching your, you since uh, March of four, uh, 4th of March this year. Yes, good. 
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for watching and being subscribed and being one of the members of the community. Uh, you know, stubborn is, let me explain about the word stubborn. It's a word that humans use to, to blame somebody else, some dog, that the reason I'm having this issue is because of my dog is stubborn or too high hyper or too this. It's not their fault. Dogs, remember this, dogs have been designed and bred for by humans for humans. I can't emphasize on this more than that. Dogs have, I, I have to write a book actually about this. Dogs have been designed and bred by humans for humans to do what we want them to do. If they were stubborn, if they were pain in the butt, <laughs> if they were headache, we wouldn't breed them. The reason we breed them is because they are very social, very good dogs, good breeds. Uh, they're good nature. They're well behaved. They're uh, easily trained, easily dealt with. And if a human cannot deal with this dog that we have bred for centuries, then it's not the dog's fault. It's the human's fault. The reason it is human's fault is because the human doesn't spend time to educate itself and learn what to do. And the reason we do that is because we don't focus on providing our dog its daily five essential needs, which is exercise, training, socialization, care, and affection. We mostly focus on care and affection. I'm sure you got your beagle puppy and it's cute and you're overwhelmed with affection and care. That's all your focus now. But you have to focus on providing your puppy exercise, daily exercise. So the day has to start with exercise. The day has to continue with training. The day has to continue with some socialization. And then you provide breakfast, for instance, and then affection. If you do any of these in different order, or if you miss providing them, you're going to have a dog who's not going to be cooperative, is not going to work with you. Therefore, you're going to call it a name, you know, stubborn, highly high headed, strong headed, uh, high energy, all that. We start na calling names, right? We blame them, them rather than solving the problem inner, in, in, internally. The internal problem in the pro uh, solving the problem internally is by understanding that you need to do this every you need to provide this uh, in this order for your beagle maybe three four five times a day so the day starts with exercise walking the dog a little bit of training sit stay before you're going out the door for example or coming in the house Maybe they have socialization. Hey, that's neighbor. You it's been neighbor's cat. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Johnson is uh, you know lawning the mowing the lawn. And, you know that socialization. And then you come home and you provide care, breakfast, right? And then if you've done all these, you say you share affection. You say such a good boy, such a good girl. You you boo, 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 do that, and then. You do the, repeat this again for after late morning, late for the afternoon, for the evening, and at night. You re repeat this, and meanwhile, you need to train your dog, your puppy, your dog has to be trained 15 minutes a day in a no distraction environment. You need to focus train your dog and be present. What I mean by being present is, Many dog owners, they say, you know what, I'm going to train my dog, but they have their phone in their hand, right? And they have their coffee in their hand. Let me make it better. <laughs> right? And they call this, I'm focused training my dog. 
This is not focused training. You're focused on your coffee and your phone. You have to put these away and really focus on your dog. Okay, your dogs. Your dogs are the reason you are doing this. You're going through providing your dog's daily five essential needs because you want to provide healthy and happy activities for your dog so you, you don't have a stubborn dog, right? So understand this, that is not your dog's fault, is human error or human's fault. Thank you, and you are the best too. Thank you for being here as well, and thank you for being a member. Will you ever own any other dog dog breeds? Yes, I will. In near future or in future, my hope is to um, have enough space to have at least 10 dogs. And one of them, uh, I'm thinking to have a golden as well. Golden Retriever, Beagles as well, uh, uh, a Border Collie. Uh, uh, blue healer probably as well um, yeah, a few other dogs breeds too yes definitely I would love to have many dogs uh, and that is my goal and plan in near future okay uh, where, we are, where are we Sab is saying thank you honestly I think it's more me with the separation anxiety he's the best love him so too uh, blinking back there why is it why am I blinking for some reason I'm blinking back there is it because I'm moving I'm not sure by the way do you like my new set uh, I worked hard on creating this set uh, and um, I'm still working it's a working in progress uh, Sab you know in general yes the humans are more emotional than the dog Dogs are emotional animals, but the human is most mostly uh, more emotional than the dog. Uh, what I mean by that is, I'll give you an example. I uh, I have a doggy daycare in here as well, and you know people come to pick up their dogs after they've left them here for a few hours, maybe four or five, six hours, eight hours, ten hours, right? And they come and pick up their dog. They are more excited than the dog when they're picking up their dogs. And that emotion, that feeling, it just feeds off to the dog and, and it makes them even more excited and more anxious because the dog says, wow, you missed me all day. So I'm going to, next time I'm going to miss you even more, right? If you keep repeating that kind of uh, excitement that you missed your dog. Yeah, I know the feeling, you know, you feel bad, you feel obligated, you feel, uh, uh, you feel um, emotionally very attached to your dog. And when it comes to leaving them home alone, for example, you feel that you're punishing your dog, you're doing something wrong. Yes, it will look like that, yeah, that you're punishing your dog, you're doing something wrong to your dog. But the thing is that if you do everything properly, it won't mean that way. What I mean by doing everything properly, if you teach your dog, for example, weight, and your dog knows what weight is, it your dog doesn't and this doesn't anticipate that you're going to come back um, anytime soon, right? Because it knows wait means it's a longer time. I'm going to stay here and wait for my mom or dad for a long time. So they anticipate uh, less. Whereas if you don't teach your dog to wait for you, they will anticipate the whole time. They will wait and, you know, stay in there that state of mind forever but if you teach them to wait they will relax and wait for you right and if the, your dog knows that 
then you know you start not feeling bad too because you're saying you know what my dog knows it knows what's going on right therefore um okay i can i can relax so you relax and your dog relaxes but you need to put on the work and teach and train your dog in order for it to learn and for you to know that your dog knows it so yes it is more of a human issue than <laughs> dog issue uh, the deal is saying the rottweilers are starting to have short shortened muzzle yes that's what i'm saying you see it's not it's not the it's not the what it used to be it's they're not breathing them anymore the way it was originally meant to and uh, this applies to other breeds and dogs too you know many beagles used to have long legs uh, and nowadays they're shortening it even the the sizes you know there's pocket beagle and all that all these breed breeds that breeders are breeding we call them design breeds are screwing up the breed and uh, you know all these yes when you shorten the muzzle of a dog you're going to have health issues breathing problems heart problems all kinds of stuff so yeah I, I i wouldn't get a dog who's being bred bad i would support a breeder or a dog that is in shelter a breeder that is breeding properly or a dog that is in shelter emma spark uh, what is the early stage age to start a puppy on agility equipment uh, it's usually eight months and older. Uh, so eight months and older, you're starting to introduce the equipment. You're not actually letting them to use it fully. They're just into getting introduced to it, like in the form of touching it and feeling it and just maybe uh, exper experimenting going over it right or uh, just being introduced to the equipment and then once they are a year older you can start actually allowing them to start practicing and using it and working on it great question uh right was a short yes uh oh, there's a repeat okay nancy is asking hi i have a seven seven month old beagle and when we put him in a cage he cries and he howls a lot do you have any advice yes so the reason you're putting your the your beagle is crying is because you haven't let me guess what <laughs> you haven't provided your puppies daily essential needs exercise training socialization care and affection you haven't provided this so therefore your puppy is crying if you provide exercise training socialization care and affection your puppy is going to be mentally and physically stimulated and will welcome the crate but if you don't provide those daily five essential needs you your dog is going to expect those uh, needs and he's going to ask for it so the reason is howling and crying is because he's telling you i need you to provide me my daily five essential needs which are exercise training socialization care and then affection if you don't provide these five essential needs for your dog or puppy your puppy is going to tell you and that is why he's telling you he's telling you that i need I need those. I need you to provide me those stuff. So focus on providing those stuff. Second of all, if you're putting your bigo puppy in a crate, make sure that it's in visible area that they can see you and you can see them so they can relax. If you separate them, if you put them in a different room, separate room and ignore them, you're basically telling them you don't care about them this is a dog and breed and age that they're sensitive they need your support still they need your commitment and 
presence. So you need to be visible. If they see you, for example, you put it by the kitchen while you're in the kitchen working and stuff and it's in the crate and it sees you, once it sees you, it relaxes and goes to sleep. But if you put it in a different room or different area, then it's gonna say, what's going on? What's happening? What they're doing? Why am I put over here? Why, why am I alone? They're not gonna relax. They're not gonna uh, be comfortable and they're gonna cry and uh, howl the whole time. It's a matter of just making the right moves and making the right choices. Elizabeth Caruso, when my 10 months old mini poodle ca carries his favorite toy on a walk, he walks beautifully on a loose leash. However, if he drops the toy, he immed immediately starts to pull. Why do you think this is? Because poodles are also, your poodle is, has a tendency to uh, retrieve. So when you put, a, when it puts a toy in its mouth, it gives it calmness, it soothes it, it's like a soother for it. So it walks nicely, but if it's dropped, it panics, right? So. I like the idea of using toys for training, but not when you're walking it. I wouldn't suggest walking your dog using a toy or taking your dog's favorite toy for a walk or to the dog park because your dog is gonna be focused on the toy and not the real reality of life. You know what I mean? When you take your dog's toy to the park or to the walk, it's like you're, you know, you've seen those kids, they're walking on the street and they're playing games and they have no idea that they're in a natural setting in the park and there's a beautiful thing happening around them and they have no clue, right? So don't take your dog's toy to the dog park or for the walk improve the walk um, by um, not depending on the on the toy and if you do that you'll see that um, yes it will be challenging in the first few days but you want to somehow avoid and uh, uh, remove the toy from the actual walk you know what I mean? Uh, you don't want it to depend on the toy when it's walking. Sab is saying, yes, you are so right. What I find is that my dog feeds off my energy. I'm calm. If I'm calm and relaxed, so he is. And if I'm excited, he's excited too. Exactly, yes. So, you know, I, I, just, I, I told you guys that I have a doggy daycare here. So I do this experiment once in a while. I, I'll go in the middle of the the play area and the, with the dogs and I'll stand there and even just think of you know just uh, uh, sad stuff you know boring sad stuff I'll start thinking about boring sad stuff and you'll see the dog some of the dogs they're going to walk away from me they're going to say mm, you're you're unbalanced you're not feeling normal and some of them, they will come forward to me to, to kind of help me and soothe me, right? It's very interesting to see that. And right away, I could start thinking about positive thoughts, happy thoughts. And you'll see the dogs are going to start moving like, you know, those atoms and molecules or, you know, uh, they get start, they start mingling and moving around and start even jumping on me, getting happy, excited. Even with me just thinking about it. I haven't even shown them my body language. I've just shown them, presented them my thoughts, my emotions. So dogs are very sensitive animals. They pick up on those things and they can react or overreact to what we feel and how we feel. And that is great for you to uh, notice that too, Sam. He knows stay very well. Training weight is great idea. Thank you. Yes. Go, and if you want to 
learn how to teach your dog the wait command. Um, I have a video. So this is it's a two part video. I'm going to put part one and then you can watch that and then uh, watch also the part two as well. So I'm going to put the, in the chat area training dog to stay home um, alone. Teach a dog to wait part one. That's the video that you want to watch. Anakin Skywalker, <laughs> I have a dog that hates baths. He runs away every time I try to bathe him. Any advice? Yes. So the way you're going to do, this is this applies to other um, challenges that you have with your dog. Start slow. So your goal is to bathe your dog, right? So don't just think of, okay, that's, what I'm going to do, and that's what I want, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to bait it. Invest for the next, let's say, two weeks. Every day, first day, you're going to just take him to the bath, put him in the bathtub. You're going to stay there for 10 seconds. You're going to remove him. Next day, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to put him in the bathtub. You're going to wait there, stay there for 20 seconds, remove it. No ball, no water, no soap, no nothing. You're just putting him in the bathtub, taking him out. Third day, fourth day, same. Fifth day, the same. Sixth day, you're going to open the water a little bit, close it, take him out. Seventh day, a little bit more, open the water, a little bit more, close the water, take him out. 14th day, you're going to open the water, start spraying all over the place, not on the dog, taking the dog out. Close the water, take the dog out. Keep doing that until you get to that point. The dog says, you know what? You're just going to put, him, put me in the bathtub. You're going to spray me a little bit. I'm fine with that. And you're going to slowly start increase, increasing the spraying, the water, a little bit more, and start with from the back, from bum area, not the head. The head should be the last place that you want to wash. Start from the bum, come forward to the uh, waist, and then back, and then, you know, neck and all that. Slowly just wash, just water, and take it out. Don't You don't have to put shampoo either. So within the next month, let's say, you know, every day you keep putting a little bit and a little bit. Eventually your dog, that's the, the idea that I want you to learn. The, you, you start teaching the dog, you offer the dog a, a, a puzzle, and then the next day you ask it to solve a, a harder puzzle. And the next day you ask it to solve another puzzle, more on and on. So the puzzles get harder and harder as the days go by, right? So your dog learns how to solve those puzzles. It's easy, it just takes time. If your dog really hates bath, that's what you need to do. You spend time every day, just little by little. Emma Sparks says, thank you. You are very welcome, Emma. Nancy, thanks for my, for my beagle, age seven months. How much exercise would you recommend? A seven month old, Beagle, um, I would say, you know, two half an hour, it's good enough. Uh, so what I would do is I would share a video in the chat area, which is called how to exercise my dog every day. You know, there are several ways of exercising dogs. Um, one of them is walking a dog. Um, exercise in general, you want to make sure that it's not done too much to the point that overwhelms the dog and you create a dog who's hyper uh, energetic, uh, hyper dog um, or hyper reactive when you over exercise. Um, therefore, you want to 
make sure that the exercise is not done uh, at once. It's done little by little, a little bit, and then break, rest, and then exercise a little bit more. That would be the solution. Uh, Linda, sorry, but daily five is not working with my eight months old biplet. She is anxiously and obvious, uh, obsessively out of control. And I do five, they do daily five. Um, she is, is a shredder of everything in her path, won't listen and is not biting me and are <laughs> massive. Uh, <laughs> um, if you have a eight months old, you have to understand that you need, if you are having eight months old and you have these challenges, you have to understand that you have to kick them up a notch, right? Your daily five, daily five essentials, you have to kick, up, kick it up a notch, maybe more training. If your eight months old is anxious and uh, obsessively out of control, that means it really needs your help and you need to do a little bit more training. So instead of 15 minutes, do half an hour of training, right? Do a lot more training. If you do a lot of training, you, you're going to bring the stress level of your dog uh, is going to lower. The stress level is going to lower. Let me share this. So if you do that, you know, what happens is your dog is going to be uh, able to solve problems easily, right? If you have a dog who is anxious and stressed, that's a sign that you need to do a little bit more of everything. A little bit more exercise, a little bit more training, a little bit more socialization, a little good amount of care, and a little less affection. <laughs> affection less uh, in this case. Um, so if you do that, what happens? Your dog's, uh, you know, is going to be, your dog is going to be able to respond to pressure of life easier. It's going to be more, uh, as you, you can see here, they get more mental and physical stimulation, which is going to result in a calmer and relaxed dog. It's, Again, don't blame the dog, blame the human, the dog owner. That's the truth. You know, your dog is not doing these things to piss you off, to ruin your life or to, to ruin your day. It's just form of conversation and it's a message to you that you need to do a little bit more. If you have a dog who's challenging you, then you should be be ready to challenge your dog a little bit more, right? It's not, don't blame you, don't blame others, don't blame the dog, don't blame me, blame, I'm not saying blame yourself, but it's a message to you, don't blame anybody. It's a message to you, it's a conversation that your dog is having with you that I need more, mom. I need more. I need more of exercise, more of training, and more of socialization. I need more of these on a daily basis so I can relax. So think of it as a message rather than your dog driving you crazy or trying to ruin your day or life. You know what I mean? Anakin is saying, Scott Walker is saying, okie dokie, I see what I got to do now. Thank you for your advice. You are very welcome. Uh, all right. I think we got all the questions answered and I did my presentation. If you have any questions and I haven't replied to your question today, and if I missed it, or you haven't still and you're thinking and you have more questions, Leave those questions in the comments area and I'll read them and I'll answer them for sure. Uh, and if you are a new member here, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon as well. So you will get notified as soon as I post my next video or if I go live. Next live session would be Friday the 29th 
at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Hopefully you will join me then. And my next video is about leash walking a beagle, in general leash walking a dog, uh, which would be premiered on Sunday at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video, this live session. I'm not sure if I would be able to do two live sessions per week now because we're going back to normal. We're getting busy. People are going back to normal for the time being that people were staying home. I started doing two session, two live sessions per week. I may just go back to one live session. Don't be surprised if that happens. I would be still going live on Fridays at 9 a.m. if I can make it on Thursday, Tuesday evenings at uh, 5 p.m. So hopefully I'll see you next time. And uh, let me see, there's one more question because if I don't answer this, um, I think we, we're gonna miss it. Yes, she does get a lot of affection. I will set up, step up the daily five a bit more. Thank you. Yes, uh, Linda, you see, Affection, this would be my last uh, answer to this question. Now, many people, what they do is they say, okay, my dog is this way and that way, so I'm going to focus on affection. Probably my dog needs affection, but the affection is the last thing a dog needs. Dogs don't really care about affection as much as they need. They care about exercise, training, socialization, and care. Affection is the last thing they need. Affection should be the reward. What I mean by that is reward for you and your dog. So I'm going to give you an example. So you get up in the morning, you take your dog for a half an hour walk. During and before and during and after the walk, you're doing some training as well with your dog. You're stepping out the door, you're saying sit, stay. Then you opening the door, stepping out the door. Uh, out the door. You're coming across crosswalks, you're saying sit and stay, lie down, wait and all that. You're training your dog. And then you come back home, you do a 15 minute training session with your dog after the walk. And then during the walk also, you have been socializing your dog. You're been, you've been telling that's Mr. Uh, Jim, uh, our neighbor, nice neighbor. He's, he's mowing the lawn. And, and uh, that's Miss, um, Miss uh, Gabby. You know, he, she bakes great cookies, blah, blah. You let your dog to socialize with them people and that's uh, Jimmy the cat you know neighborhood cat uh, you see it every day and that's a, that is a bus you know crossing here it makes loud noises and that is uh, a bike uh, you know Harley Davidson uh, and then you socialize and you come home and you say this is a vacuum it makes a lot of noise and this is a spoon makes a lot of noise things like that socialization and then you offer uh, breakfast, right? Hopefully a raw diet, species appropriate diet to your dog. And then you're uh, also brushing your dog and you're um, making sure that everything is okay with your dog. Now that you have provided exercise training, socialization and care, your dog is ready to take in affection. And you can reward yourself to share affection with your dog because you have done your part, because you have provided exercise, training, socialization, and care for your dog. Therefore, you can say, I deserve to share affection with my dog, and my dog deserves to get affection from me. If you think of it that way, then you're doing, you're becoming a, 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 a good, human mom or dad provider for your dog and your dog is going to be more responsive to your uh, uh, your energy right but if you only focus on affection or 
say, you know, I'm going to do a little bit of exercise and no training today because I'm tired and uh, I don't have time. And yeah, that's Mr. Jimmy. Eh? Forget about Mr. Jimmy. Uh, and uh, here's your dinner. Here's your breakfast. Uh, I eat it, whatever. Oh, come here. I, I had a bad day. Uh, I, you know, I had a crappy day at my office. And I need a hug. I need you to come and share affection. I can. If you do that, you're going to have a nightmare. <laughs> you're going to have a dog who's horrible. Okay. Try the first approach, okay? So hopefully that will help you. Thank you for the question. Thank you everybody for joining the, the school today. <laughs> and hopefully you enjoyed and benefited from the show. And if you have any questions, leave those questions in the comments area. And I'll see you next time. And until next time, have fun with your dog.